In this lesson, we're just going to look at the drums. Now, this is probably the easiest drum part that I've ever come across for a task 3A. Mostly, it's all the same pattern all the way through, but I would be careful because there, there may be some couple of cymbal splashes scattered here and there, but for the most part, it's kind of just this very static pattern. Now, what you're looking at here is this DR part and this hi-hat part. So the bottom one is the bass drum, and then this middle one here is the snare, and then obviously this is the hi-hat. So when we come over to the score, what you're going to notice is that it's a very static pattern. If I zoom in, if I zoom in, you can just see that it just goes bass drum, snare, bass drum, snare, bass drum, snare, and all, all the way through it. And it's, it's very static, it just keeps going, it's really quite nice, until it gets to bar 25, where you've got this, this sequence of three. So you've got this rest followed by three semiquavers. Rest followed by three semiquavers. Something that Sam's done here is quite interesting. I, I really like the way Sam's done this, because what I normally do is I put all of the drums on one track, and then I separate them out. And that may have been how Sam worked, but for this, he, this is what he's got so far. He's already got all the tracks separated out. In order for me to see all the parts as a drum set, all I've done is I've selected everything, and then I can see it as a drum set would normally work. The reason I say this is interesting, because each part, rather than going through and selecting a kit he's actually just chosen the the instrument that he, he wanted so if i if i show you that if you go to the hi-hats and you hit on ultra beat and all of these are, are ultra beat double click and you'll see where it says hi-hat banks so he's chosen all of his hi-hats and he's put them all in one place where he can actually just choose all the hi-hats in one go which is actually a really good way of working i, I really like this i'm gonna i'm gonna steal this um <laughs> And if you want to know which one he's used, all you would do is select the appropriate hi-hat. So we'll just come up here, we'll select this, we'll find out where the hi-hat is, and we'll just click here. And what you'll notice on Ultra Beat is that it flashes up blue to tell you which one he's using. So here we go, and it's there, look. So we're using this F note, F2. So once we've done that, I'll share all these screenshots so you can have a little look. But if you want to get to the hi-hat bank, all you would do is come down to drum banks and then choose hi-hat. And he's done exactly the same thing for the kicks. He's gone to the kick bank and then for the snare, he's gone to the snare bank. And this gives him the optimal. So you can actually just choose any snare he wants and just combine them together. So I really like that. But, you know, you're more than free to work from one one sound bank and then separate them up afterwards is completely up to you. So what else have we got going on here? Now all of these tracks have reverb on them. So if you look at this bus one, the reverb that we're using is this PT verb. Let me just open this up and I'll and I'll share this as well. And there's quite a lot of reverb on this. One thing I would say to you guys is when you're looking at the kick drum, my thoughts are mostly I don't put reverb on a kick drum or very rarely I put a lot of reverb on a kick drum because it muddies up the sound so just be very aware of that that that's not a common practice but I mean in this instance Sam's used it and it works absolutely fine we've also got this nice compressor which I believe is just the built-in one for this particular preset and I'll share all of these now we've also had to look at the mix values and you're going to have to see where they sit in the mix as well so the way we've got them here is we've dropped down the volume and the snare is panned slightly off to the left the kick should be dead center ever so slightly down and we're gonna have to readjust this as we move through the mix and then finally the hi-hat is off to the right ever so slightly and this is giving you a nice balance one thing I did then is you solo the main track have all of these parts selected and what you're listening for is any changes in the part and then you can add them in so let's have a look at this if i just press play just here and we'll we'll listen to the, actually let's go on a bit further where the where the hi-hats come in so we'll start from 23 <laughs> You heard there was something happening there. I'm not sure if that was a snare or if that was a little symbol, but we'll we'll look at that in more depth as we go along. But you can hear because my track is synchronized to the grid, and because this is all to the grid, it's very easy to listen to the track and follow along with the part that I've got written and just find any errors that are in in the part and correct them as I go. 
So let me just play you the drum set now as it currently is. And remember, we will be manipulating this as we go, but this is what we've got so far. See what you think. So we'll just solo the three tracks. Here we go. I think that's pretty much everything I need to say about the drum part. My mission for you guys then is get this whole part in, use the score, use the screenshots that I provided, get them in, have a listen to any errors that you, you could find, and then just work through any changes and manipulate the sounds to fit your own mix.